Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Famzi, aka Ninja Picking for you to see my day. A guy that survived prostate cancer had this testimony to say. Please, let's just listen and see if someone. Good morning, everyone that's listening to this um, audio message. My name is Victor Ngbangwa. I'm 63 years old. I want to share this um, message um, with everybody who is uh, listening to this um, audio message, how I survived prostate cancer, not prostate enlightenment, prostate cancer. I was diagnosed of prostate cancer a few years ago and I've been managing it. I've gone to a series of hospitals, taken some tests, sorry, done some tests and some scans and um, since then it kept um, degenerating I never knew what to do at one time they said I will go for uh, scraping the doctor said I will go for scraping that's what they call scraping and and they will do it perfectly and I called my kid brother I told him about this I said no it has to be re-operation but when I investigated I found out that among 100 percent or like 100 people they operate 80 people or 85 people would die after a few years after a few days or a few months so i became scared i said i'm not going for operation that if it, it means death i didn't mind because by the time they operate you you are no more a man as you used to be and and um when you're no more a man, even in the house, you know what it means. So I decided I have to die with the prostate if it's what is going to send me home. And um, last year, it got to the extent that I cannot peel well through my cucumber. And I used to have pressure on my cucumber. And uh, it got to the extent, let me just fasten it. It just got to the extent that it has to be dropping. It has to be dropping and when i package it and uh, my trousers will be wet you know and i told few people they said i should go for operation i told the doctor my doctor it said i should come for operation i rejected it so but my mind is telling me that i i have to die because i can't bring myself going for operation spending a lot of money spending time and on an operation that's going to be 50 50 and at last um that person is going to die so instead of dying tomorrow i better die now that's what i concluded so um I, um um sometime october last year i couldn't even be again i sleeps in in the um restroom I stayed there when I will, if I go to pee, I'll stay there like 20 minutes. And the pain is satanic. The pain is so severe that um, you can hardly bear it. That was the time my wife had when I was doing, <clears throat> she started crying. I don't want to cry, the worst is coming. I had to just brace up and, and let her just brace up and be strong because uh, anything can happen i'm not going for operation she knelt down started begging me it's better you stay alive uh, even if you're not a man i can manage you i told her no if i go for operation and die two years later it's still the same dead you know uh, i refused so it got to the end i started going through my lungs and my neck my knees i couldn't walk i couldn't get to work either if I'm driving to work, I have to stop on the wheel like 10 times to pee. And when I'm peeing, everybody would know that something is wrong with me. So I, I don't know. I, I, I then um, went, it got to this and I couldn't bear it. I went to see my doctor. My doctor checked and said, it's going to do PSA test and a series of tests. And PSA test is going to take two weeks or a week and and I told my doctor that I'm going to die before that the test, the result comes out. He said, why are you saying like that? I said, no, what I'm passing through. So um, that was on Friday of that month. You can't remember the date now. 
So on Sunday, I'm supposed to go for a village meeting, which I am one of the executives, and I couldn't go for the meeting because I was all those wearing kind of pampas. I went and bought tight panties, and I had to put a um, napkin or hand towel inside to drive out to, to walk, to stay a few, few hours and come back. So um, when I told them, because I don't hide myself, I don't know how to keep quiet, you know. So when I told them, another person called me, about five people called me. So one of my younger brothers called me. I told him, he said, my brother, why are you doing all this? It's very simple. Come on, you didn't tell anybody. It's simple. I've cured a lot of people. With, uh, your own is simple. There are some people like carrying urine bag all about. I've cured about four or five of them. Jesus Christ. Are you, are you kidding me? I said, no, it's just simple. Go and look for sour sap. Go and look for sour sap. First, first of all, you got to stop eating anything starch, anything carbohydrate, anything, sorry, anything starch, anything sugar. You have to stop sugar completely. Starting from honey, refined sugar, or any food that, that can transform to sugar inside your body, you got to stop it. You got to stop drinking. You got to stop anything apart from beans and sour sap. You have to prepare a ripe sour sap like smoothie, turn it like pap, and then eat it with beans. Before you eat it one week, my brother, you come and testify. <sighs> I got up because I've gone on social media, I got on Facebook, I've taken Posse Stropper, I've taken Ginger Bull, I've taken a lot of them on the social media, I've taken some supplement from, um, what's the name, from New Life, it couldn't work. So I then got up, wear my panties and my papas as usual, went to my tama fruit market luckily i saw a lot of them they have to chapter it right one i ate beans and that smoothie shower sap in the afternoon i ate another one around nine in the evening then in the morning on monday i ate another one man in the afternoon on monday oh my god it worked like miracle miracle it was miraculous. I wanted to pee. I just noticed urine is coming out on its own without stress, without pain. It wasn't streaming. It was not forceful, but it was coming out. You know, I didn't put my hands on, on my waist. I didn't scream. There was no pain. Jesus Christ. I noticed below my abdomen. Okay, sorry, before I got to that, in the morning, you see what I what came out of my stomach from my anus. Uh, in fact, I was overwhelmed. I was so happy. My abdomen below my abdomen that was paining me relieved me, and then I took that diet kind of supplement for two weeks, and I am now a full man that can use my cucumber that I used to be before. I am now a full man. And in the process, once in a while, you drink tomato juice, one cup, like two times in a week. Tomato, raw tomato juice, organic tomato, not refined tomato. Tomato seed, grind it or blend it, drink one cup, two times in a week. And onion, onion, like... 30 CL, 30 CL, once in two weeks. That will help Pete to fasten the healing. So, it is miracle. It is miracle. Now I can perform well. And if I'm, if I'm peeing now, my pee can till the ground. That's to show how forceful it is. At 63 years, I'm still acting as even 25, 20. So, I want this audio message to go viral, to go everywhere, to help men who are dying of prostate cancer. Because even the last scan I went to, they said it's cancerous. They showed it to me on the screen. Cancer is, is in fact, the doctor said 
if the PSA result comes out, it's going to do another test to know if they're going to remove both my testes. So, which kind of a man am I if they remove my testes and everything makes me a man? So, please, if it gets to you, share this audio a message so that I can reach some men that are suffering from it. One of my friends went for operation and has been I, I, urging me to go for I refused. When I told him this testimony, he started crying. He said, why did he not know all these things? So I believe what they said in the Bible that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. We don't know. Nobody knows. And God has brought, I don't know how to put it, every solution to every sickness. But it's just that we have not found out. This I'm telling you works my, like magic. When you use it, you're going to be happy and you're going to give it to other people. I thought of going from hospital to hospital to meet people who are, you know, you know, sick of prostate cancer, but I'm beginning to wonder what the hospital management is going to tell me. And I, I wouldn't like embarrassment. I wanted to go to a urology section and tell them, but I'm wondering, I don't know anywhere in Nigeria where freedom of speech is not really um, encouraging. Uh, and so, so please, as you are hearing it, spread it. One more thing, when you start this sour soap and beans, after two weeks, you now start taking, do all that every evening, one capsule. Do all that, do all that every evening. It's quite expensive, but it's, um, I think it's one month treatment. Take it a long time and don't stop the shower sap once in a while, even if you are healed. Thank you very much. Have a good life to live. And please share. We want to eradicate breast cancer and prostate cancer because this shower sap and beans too can take care of breast cancer. Other beans, akara or moi moi. Beans, akara or moi moi. Porridge beans. Akara or my my please share it so that we will together eradicate the case of prostate cancer and breast cancer that is killing people every time. And remember, what will help us too is diet. Because what we eat now is poison. I was told earlier I didn't believe it because we eat anyhow back in the West, we eat anything, you know. I thought like my exercise because I work out every day two hours will help, but it couldn't really solve. But it helps. It helps to a wider extent. So please share this audio message so that we can jointly eradicate breast cancer and prostate cancer. Thank you and have a good day. Enjoy yourself in a good life.